What's up, brothers and sisters? I hope you guys are having a blessed day today. I'm Colton from Seeking Wisdom Ministries. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. Guys, I have something that I really feel I want to share with everyone who watches these videos. Um, every video I do, you know, I'm, I want to be led only by the Spirit of God. I don't want to come on here and talk my opinions or my flesh or, or this or that or endless genealogies that, you know, get nowhere. I want to talk when Jesus tells me and leads me to get on here and speak his word. But I received last night a dream that shook me to my core that, you know, I almost want to weep right now just of the reality of the shift that needs to happen for those who profess Jesus, those who profess God, those who say they know Jesus Christ, but they deny him by their works. We have to have this understanding, guys. We can talk and profess that we believe in God, that we are right with Jesus, that we can profess an internal holiness by the blood of the Lamb all we want. But that judgment day when we stand before our Creator is going to be that reality of our profession revealed. And God wants me to share with you what I got last night. The dream, the vivid dream that I had of almost, I'm trying to put it into words, I'm trying to ask a Holy Spirit to give me the words to be able to explain the dream. It has to do with how narrow the road is and how many people aren't going to make it to heaven including the people who call themselves Christians, including the people who say that Jesus is their best friend, the love of their life. But that judgment day will reveal where their faith was truly. Guys, this is scary stuff. I fear God deeply. I fear God more than anything. I fear God more than man. I fear God more than this disease. I fear God more than what's going to be happening on this world, whether there's a meteor coming or not. I fear God more than anything because my God, our God, the God of the Word, of God, the Bible, of the Scriptures, Holy Spirit inspired by men of God who were used as an instrument, a utensil for the invisible God. I fear that God. The dream I saw almost a line of people and, 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 and there were there were many lines. There were many ways. It almost was like I'm, I'm trying to put in words because I don't know how to explain what I saw with words, but I know the Holy Spirit will reveal. But many lines, many, many different ways that many men and women thought were to Jesus Christ that led to God. They, they, they thought this way led to Jesus because their pastor told them this was the righteous way. Then another denomination, this way was the righteous way, so they thought they led to Jesus. By doing whatever they thought was right, was necessary. They thought being a good person made it to heaven, made it to Jesus. They thought doing their Hail Mary prayers led to heaven. They thought doing good works would lead them to, to Jesus. They thought being a good person was would lead them to Jesus. They thought that they were doing the will of God, yet they never came to a true repentance and they found themselves in a place called hell. They found themselves in a place that they never even knew were even a real thing. They found themselves in burning flames of fire because they thought they were doing God's will by having a belief. B belief alone won't save us. Belief alone won't save us. And I'm about to go into the Word of God and prove this. But that dream, I woke up and, and I just saw this one direct middle path. After all these lines, people thought they were going the righteous way. But there was only one way. There is only one way that leads to eternal life. And I need there and I desire, but it's God's heart. God's willing, none should perish, but all should come to repentance. But I saw the, 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 the people's emotions. I felt their emotions. I felt how, how the worst thing that they could even imagine was rewarded to them. 
in the sense of hell. We all deserve hell. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But in the love that he has for his creation, he made a way. But there is not multiple ways. There is not multiple gods. There is one God in whom we serve. There's one God and one Father of all. But time is limited. And I don't know when. I'm not going to predict a date when Jesus Christ is coming back. But I'm saying today, he could come at any moment. Are you truly in the faith, examine yourselves because that dream that I received is a warning. It's a warning for those not who are in Christ and abiding in Him and are being walking the Spirit, having faith in Him daily, denying their flesh daily, denying what they want and saying, you know what? Whatever cup of suffering you have for me, I drink it with joy because of who you are and what you've done for me. The gospel is that Jesus set us free and died, buried, and was resurrected on the third day. The gospel is Jesus Christ, but if we turn any of our eyes on other things besides Jesus Christ, we have opened the door for Satan to come and steal the seeds of faith from our hearts, from our, from our being, and deteriorate us to drag us to hell. Because the reality is, guys, we were born in trespasses and this sin, destined to hell forever, but God made a way. But if we think that we're just being a good person is going to make us to he heaven or doing certain things is going to make us to heaven, it is having faith. But faith alone will not save you. And that is the truth. And I'm about to prove that scripturally. Why can't we just receive the word of God like a child and have childlike faith? Let's go into it right now. Many of you are probably shocked. Faith alone? What do you mean? Faith alone? I hear preachers on YouTube all the time saying faith alone. I used to believe that faith alone would save you. But this is the reality. I'm not going to prove it by my own words. I'm going to prove it by the word of God. You have the decision and the free will to choose what you believe. I choose to believe the word of God. Not man. Let, man, let God be true and every man a liar. James 2.14 through 26. Let's look at this, guys. Faith without works is dead. Many people have heard this, but do you believe it? The Bible is not a book. To be interpreted. The Bible is a book. The word of God. The scriptures are to be read. Believed. And obeyed. And the truth and the fruit of your belief will show by are you obeying it. Let's look at this guys. James 2.14 What doth it profit my brethren? Though a man say he hath faith and have not works. Can faith save him? That's a question. He's, he's being very sarcastic. And I think that's hilarious. Because it shows how almost crazy people can think that they can get heaven their own way by just saying, oh, I have faith. This is James, the half-brother of Jesus Christ. Do you know that he didn't receive the revelation of Jesus Christ was God until after he died and was resurrected? My point is, he imagine having an older brother who was perfect. An old, older brother and always Mary telling you, the mother, why can't you be like Jesus? This is him, the half-brother of Jesus Christ, James, writing. When he finally had the revelation of Jesus Christ, he's writing and saying, imagine the, the revelation when you realize you were living with God. And then all the things that your older brother told you and was leading you and telling you to do, it finally flooded in your head, flooded in your heart. Oh, my God was with me the whole time. So I'm going to take these words because these are Holy Spirit inspired words. And this was the half brother of Jesus Christ. And he's saying, can faith save him and have not works? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What are the profit? What is a profit, guys, if you see someone in need and you have the needs to help them? Using wisdom, of course, because there's a lot of homeless people who just want to grab money. Using wisdom, because God healed only those who the Father told him to, which was in his will. But my point is this, and the point of James is, if you see someone in need and you walk past them and you have the needs necessary to help them out, and you just go, oh, be ye warmed and filled while you're yourself filled. Is that love? Is that faith? Can faith alone save you? Can you saying, oh, I believe in Jesus, save you? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. 
Show me thy works. Sorry, show me thy faith without my, thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. James is saying, literally, you say you have faith. Where are your works? I'll, I'll show you my faith by my works. Faith will produce the fruit of works, guys. It's not, but we can't flip-flop and reverse it. We can't go, oh, I have faith in my works, and that's what saves me. No, because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But the difficulty of helping people understand is we, as people, can never save anybody. We can only share the gospel and pray to God that God reveals the truth to you. But this is the truth. Have childlike faith. Thou believest that there is one God. I'm saying one God because people think that there's three persons. No, there's one God. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. He's saying, well, you believe in one God? Good for you. You believe? Good for you. Well, the devils also believe and tremble. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? <laughs> but do you know that faith without works is dead? Did you know that? I mean, it seems almost simple from the word of God, but we got men of God trying to pre preach most truth, which false doctrine has truth in it, guys. But it's that little leaven of false teaching that leavens the whole lump. And will lead people to hell. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? This is the brother, half-brother of Jesus saying this, guys. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac, his son, upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works? And by works was faith made perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith Abraham believed God. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Imagine being called the friend of God. Who are your friends? Do you have friends who you don't have common interests with? Who, you know, you can't share things and agree upon things? No. You wouldn't be friends with them, right? Abraham was a friend of God because he had faith and he did that which pleased God. How many of you guys are doing that which pleases God? That's the question. And that's the fear of God we need to have. What are you doing? God sees everything. Let's look here, guys. You see then how by works a man is justified. It's saying right there, a man's works is, <laughs> a man is justified by his works and not by faith only. Not by faith only. Why do we read the word of God and go, no, it's by faith only. And if you think anything else, you're going to go to hell. That's demonic. And that's bringing, that used to bring me into <laughs> false doctrine until I read the word and I believed it until I read the word and God showed me and he can show you today. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. It's very plain, plain guys. James is saying, if you don't have a spirit inside the body, transportation, okay, are you alive? No. You're dead. Saying you can't profess to have faith and not have works. But where is your faith? Is it in Jesus Christ which produces works? Or is it in the works which produces false self-righteousness, Pharisee spirit? It's a balance, guys. And God is bringing back a balance to the church of God. And I believe that. But it's very few people who are waking up and listening and seeing this, guys. We live in a world where we're corrupt. We're living in a world where we have the demonic news media lying to us about what's really going on. But at the end of the day, none of that matters because it's faith in Jesus Christ that produces works, but you can't profess Jesus without having works to show. Where's your fruit? Where's your fruit? I don't want anybody to misinterpret what I'm saying in the blood sacrifice of Jesus. We deserve hell, but the Lord gave me the dream last night of how many people, this is not for people who are truly in Christ, it's for people who think that they are in Christ. They think that they're saved. They think that they're born again. But if you were born again, you are gone with the old life. You are in with the new. You are gone with the things you used to do in the carnal ways of life. And you are in and abiding in Christ. He is the vine and ye are the branches. But do you not know, vain, O oh man, that faith without works is dead? God, I pray everybody watching this video right now develops a fear of God, a love of you, to obey because God we want to be a friend of yours we want to serve you in the way that you are pleased with we need to become as John 3 1 through 5 says born again of water and of spirit the water is the covenant activated with you father 
being baptized in Jesus' name under one God for the remission of sins, repenting from our old ways, our old life. God, we repent. We are baptized in Jesus' name and we received the gift of the Holy Spirit. We receive it, God, and we receive it by evidence of tongues and magnifying and prophesying your love. Glorious are you, King Jesus. Glorious are you, Father God. One God. Revelation 4, verse 2. There's one God on the throne. There's one on the throne. There's one on the throne. We serve one God. But even if we believe that there's one God, we need to truly hold on and cling to that which is good and abhor that which is evil. So, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you give a revelation of who you are to those who are seeking you. That the word is enough. That your word will not return void in Jesus' name. I love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. God bless you guys. Seek him. This is real. This isn't fake. I love you guys. And I, knowing that the word of God says, knowing the terrors of the Lord, we persuade men. Knowing that this dream that I felt and that I saw and I felt the emotions of the people when they're standing before God and they're saying, Lord, Lord, I thought. I knew you. I thought I was doing works for you. I thought that I went to church and I served in the church. And hearing those words, for many, many will say that. Depart from me. I never knew you, worker of iniquity. You are either dead to sin or you're dead in your sin. If you sinned, you have an advocate with the Father. You may ask him for forgiveness and he will forgive you. But faith without works is dead. God bless you. In Jesus' name.